Hey guys, it's Riley Swords here, and today I will be putting the Spider Man trilogy against the Dark Knight trilogy. As you can probably see, I've got both the trilogies on Blu ray, and these are my top two personal favourite uh, superhero trilogies, so I thought I'd put them up against each other. So, as usual, I'll be analysing their characters, story, action effects, and music, and I won't determine uh, the films individually, it'll be the trilogies as a whole. So, yeah, let's get to it. Characters. Now, we've got the Spider-Man trilogy. We've got Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. We've got Mary Jane. We've got Harry Osborn. We've got Aunt May. We've got Uncle Ben. We've got Green Goblin. We've got Dr. Octopus. We've got the rent guy, Mr. Dickovich. Uh, he's one of my personal favourite characters in the trilogy. In the, well, I was in trilogy, but he's not in the first one. But yeah, still a really fun character. Uh, we've got Venom. We've got Sandman. And we've got the new Goblin, who's also Harry Osborn. But, you know, he's kind of like a different person from, like, this first Batman movie to the third one. So, yeah. In the Dark Knight trilogy, we've got Bruce Wayne slash Batman. We've got Ra's al Ghul. We've got um, Lucius Fox. Uh, we've got Alfred. We've got the love interest, Rachel Dawes. We've got Scarecrow. And if I said Ra's al Ghul. Um, we've got the Joker. I don't know if I said him. Uh, we've got Two Face, we've got Bean, and we've got Catwoman. There are probably some like other good characters in there, but they're like the main ones. So yeah, it's kind of difficult because like the Dark Knight trilogy characters are like more gritty and realistic. But I brought with the Spider-Man characters, and they are a lot of fun. So I'm gonna give characters to Spider-Man. Story. Now, the story in Dark Knight is pretty much like um, in Batman Begins. It's his origin story. It's a perfect origin story. One of the best origin stories. Um, probably I've ever seen. Uh, then he gets trained by the League of Shadows, comes back to Gotham, fights um, crime, and the League of Shadows tries to come and like destroy Gotham. So then um, Batman defeats Ra's al Ghul, the leader. And yeah, that's the story of Batman Begins. In Dark Knight, um, he's still being Batman, and then like a new terrorist comes into like Gotham. He's the Joker, very theatrical, makeup, all that stuff. And he is like kind of a terrorist, and he's killing people until like Batman builds a true identity. So that's like a probably big dilemma for uh, for Bruce Wayne. It's like, am I gonna like show the world on Batman, or like let everyone get killed every day? So yeah, it's a really good film. What we all are really. And the Dark Knight Rises. Uh, the story is um, his girlfriend died. Spoiler if you haven't seen Dark Knight. But yeah, he's been in like seclusion for about, I don't know nine years. No. I don't know, it's been a while. And then, like, he finds out about Bane, how he, he used to be in the League of Shadows. So it's like, yeah, I'm getting back into business and stuff. Uh, meets Catwoman on the way. Um, and what I do like about The Dark Knight Rises, Dark Knight Rises isn't that much of a good movie, but it's, I like that Bane, he, like Batman's finally met someone who's, like, physically superior to him. And Dark Knight and Batman Begins, you don't get that. So, yeah, that's a good thing about Dark Knight Rises. And that's it, and that's the story. And I do feel like, um, all of it is just one big story. It flows really well. You can watch them um, after another, straight after another, and it makes sense. So yeah, Spider Man. The story of Spider Man. Spider Man One. There's an ordinary teenager, Peter Parker, gets bitten by a spider, becomes Spider Man. That's a great origin story. Probably a better origin story than Batman Begins, actually, in my opinion. Anyway, um, so he gets his powers. He uh, first uses them for like his own good. I do his wrestling and stuff, which is really fun to watch. And then his uncle gets killed, and then it then it's like very powerful, with great responsibility. So he makes a new costume. Oh well, yeah, he did have one costume, then he makes another. Uh, fights crime, and then Willem Dafoe comes in. Well, I mean Green Goblin. Uh, he's played by Willem Dafoe comes in. Uh, he's like got this like uh, human enhanced serum, and he wants Spider-Man to join. Spider-Man's like no, they fight, and that's it. It's a really good movie. And Spider-Man Two. Um, he's still got his powers, but everything's going really bad for him. Like, his girlfriend's marrying someone else, his best friend hates him, he can't afford a rent. Um, he's getting paid, like, not a lot. Everything's going really bad for him, so just, and it's all down to his, like, powers. He thinks that his powers are blocking him from having a good life. So it's like, yeah, screw the powers, buy powers, I'm going to lead a normal life. But then he's like, oh crap, the, um, New York really needs me to be Spider-Man. So yeah, another dilemma, am I going to become Spider-Man again in real life, or just let other people, like, die and stuff because of my selfishness. 
So yeah, it's a really good story. He gets his powers back. Um, he gets the girl, beats Doc Ock, who's a really good villain. Bit overrated though. So yeah, Spider-Man 2, really good movie. Got a really great story. Spider-Man 3, the story dam damps down a bit. Um, everything's going really good for him. And then, but then he finds out that like um, Sandman killed his uncle. So he goes out to find him. He gets the black suit. So that turns him a bit evil. And, he, and it turns him into a very dancey person, which I don't know why the black suit would do that to you. But who cares, it's a movie. Um, so yeah, it gets rid of the black suit, which I think is one of the best points in Spider-Man 3, where he gets rid of the black suit. Really awesome seeing the church, the screaming, it's just awesome. Um, then the black suit goes on to Eddie Brock, his rival co-worker. He comes to him, oh, I forgot to mention New Goblin. Yeah, Harry Osborn finds his dad's Green Goblin suit and all that stuff, puts it on, tries to kill Peter. Peter. So yeah, that's Spider Man 3 is a pretty good movie as well. But for story wise, I'm gonna to go to Dark Knight because it's a very straight story all the way through and in like the Spider Man trilogy it's like different like steps in stories. This is one big story, it flows really well, it's awesome. So I'm gonna give the story to the Dark Knight. Action and effects. Now this has gotta to go to um Spider Man because yeah the Dark Knight right, the Dark Knight trilogy is like got some good effects, but because it's like supposed to re be real, really realistic, it's not like 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 flying and all that stuff. But there are some good scenes. It's like the truck flipping over in Dark Knight. You got the awesome fight scenes between Batman and Bane. You got Batman flying through the window in um, Dark Knight. You've got when Batman burns down like the um, League of Shadows home thing, whatever it's called. But in Spider-Man trilogy, you've got Spider-Man swinging around New York. Uh, you can Doc Ock's tentacles look awesome. It's got some great fight scenes. The Venoms like Goo or Symbiote that looks really good. So the effects on Sandman are just phenomenal. Uh, you've got Green Goblin, Green Goblin's glider flying through New York. It's just awesome. So action effects are going to go to the Spider-Man trilogy. Music. Now this is kind of difficult because both of the scores in these whole trilogies are so iconic. Like the Spider-Man score, it really, like, it's like it's telling you the whole story through music. It's just beautiful. And then Dark Knight Trilogy, yeah, in the Dark Knight Trilogy, it does the same. It's got a proper, like, gritty sounding, um, like, gritty, but you're like, you know, something's good's going to happen. So that's really great. But the Spider-Man score is just so iconic, I'm going to have to give it to Spider-Man. So, yeah, it is um 3-1 to Spider-Man, I think. Yeah, it is. And I do think that Spider-Man is the better trilogy because Dark Knight trilogy is gritty, it's realistic. Like Batman Begins is great, but so is Spider-Man. Dark Knight is great, but so is Spider-Man 2. Dark Knight Rises isn't that good, but neither is Spider-Man 3. But, in my personal opinion, the Spider-Man trilogy as a whole is a feel-good trilogy. Um, I can watch all three films like any day of the week, it is just phenomenal. So Spider-Man Trilogy is the winner for today. So yeah, thanks for watching my uh, Versus Series movies, Spider-Man Trilogy vs. Dark Knight Trilogy. Make sure you watch my other Versus Series and Top 10s and Worst to Best. Make sure you like and comment and subscribe. Make sure you watch the next video. So yeah, see ya.